everyone welcome back i appreciate you joining me again today i'm evangelist charlotte lumpkins and this is the kingdom of heaven series i'm doing shout it out to the rooftops ministry i welcome you back today to this time we're gonna take not much time today with the word of god only 21 22 minutes i hope you're able to join me in following up on our series called joshua the old testament was studying the book of joshua the title of it, this is Joshua, Leadership, Akon, Sin, and the Coming Judgment. Yes, Akon did some things. He disobeyed God and he paid for it. And not only that, his family did too. Yes, we're going to read about what happened to Akon. Some of you might already remember from the other videos, but those who have not, we're going to do a brief summary, a little review so that you can follow up with this as well on your own time. Why don't we invite the Holy Spirit and let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we invite your spirit, Lord. Those that are listening, God, I pray that they would stay. Take 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes out of their day, God, and they would hear what thus saith the Lord. Father, I pray that they would understand and know that you only want to guide us. Your mercy and your grace is upon us and for us because Christ died for us sins. Lord, we ask you now, be with us in this time, we pray. Meet every need of every listener. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Amen, Lord, yes, what you have done for us. Now, if you have your Bibles, open to the um, Old Testament, the book of Joshua. We will read from there. We're going to pick up where we left off. Achan uh, uh, confesses, yes, it's true, that he did see the things and he did desire them and he did covet them and he did take it. He confessed that he took a beautiful robe from Babylonia and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. He did. He didn't just take one thing. He took three. He didn't just take one thing that, oh, my wife will like this, but let me get something for myself. So when he took those things, these were the things he was commanded not to take. Joshua told everybody, we're going to win Jericho. We're going to take that wall. That wall is coming down, but don't touch nothing that's over there that's yours. We just want you to wipe out the people, leave the stuff, take the gold and the silver, put it into the ark temple, but don't touch nothing else for yourself. Well, Akon, that information went in one ear and out of the other in Akon. He decided that he saw it, he wanted it, and he took it. Well, those are called devoted things. Mm -hmm. Devoted things of the Lord have to be destroyed. They cannot be your possession. Akon was told by Joshua. Joshua heard from the Lord, don't touch my devoted things. They belong to me. You can't have them. Tell them you're not taking the spoil from these people. Burn it. It's not yours they're mine. Okay. Well, here we are. Akon confesses. He took it. He says, it is true in verse 20 of chapter seven. It is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I've done. One, I saw the plunder. I took the beautiful robe, two shekels of silver. He said, I coveted them and took them. And then he says, they are hidden in the ground inside my tent in the silver underneath. So not only did he take these things, he hid them. Not only did he think nobody saw it, Israelites lost the battle because of it. Yes, there's no victory when we have sin in our lives. No, there's no victory when we're trying to press in, get something from God, get our prayers answered. If we're unforgiving, mean, jealous, angry, frustrated with people, and we're trying to get, Lord, help me with my needs, but I can't stand all them over there. That doesn't work like that. No, he wants you to have go. Forgive your sister, brother, father, mother, whoever it is. Bring your gift to the altar when you've done that. Then we can talk, God says. So this is what Achan did. He hid this, but, Achan, but Israelites failed to win a battle. It was a battle they were supposed to win. It was simple. They had 3,000 people, men and warriors. They were going to go fight, but guess what? They go hightailing out of there. They run. They get defeated, and they should have had that battle like that. So um, Joshua prays and cries before the ark. He says, Lord, what happened? We should have won this one. We lost. Where were you, God? What did we do wrong? What did, what did you do, God? And the Holy Spirit said, the Lord said, get up, Joshua. I didn't do nothing. There's sin in the camp. Somebody amongst your, your team, your group, your clan, an Israelite has sinned. 
and they took something that was devoted to me. They stole. So not only did um, Akon um, um, hide stuff, he stole stuff. He stole stuff that belonged to the Lord, and he hid it, and he covered it, and he stole. So he broke two commandments. Thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not covet. So that was it right there. So now we're at the place of judgment. What happens? What happened to Akon? Because he took those things, he was not supposed to do. For my new listeners, you are up to speed. For those who already know what this is about, we're just going to continue. That was a brief review to remind you of where we are. Let's go to Joshua chapter 7, verse 24. Then Joshua, together with all of Israel, took Achan, son of Zara, the silver, the robe, and the gold wedge, and his sons and daughters. They took his cattle, his donkeys, and sheep, his tent, and all that he had to the valley of Achan. They took him and his family and his stuff. Okay, they marched them all over to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, why have you brought this trouble on us? By you taking that, we can't fight our battles. When there's sin in our lives, we can't fight against the enemy. And the enemy don't care how big or how small that sin is. He got a foothold. It starts out a small thing, one pencil, an eraser, you know, um, um, I mean, uh, a cigarette match. I don't know. Whatever it is, he took it. And that starts off with small. But later on, it turns into bigger things. It could turn into bitterness. It could turn into rage. It could turn into murder. It could turn into malice. It could turn into lying. And then hiding the truth. Oh, Lord, it starts. It just starts small. And Akon thought he could just take those three things from this battle. Can you imagine any other battle that he might have started taking stuff? hoarding stuff, grabbing stuff, and the Lord said, no, don't take it. He said, the Lord will bring trouble on you today because of what you did, there's judgment. That's what he's saying. So then all Israel stoned him, and after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. They stoned Achan, they stoned Achan sheep, they stoned his donkeys, they stoned his sons and his daughters and his cattle. Can you imagine what the wife and the kids are thinking? Why are they doing this, Dad? What did we do wrong? Well, that's it. When you have sin in your life, it affects your family. It affects those around you. When you're born again, washing the blood, standing on the promises of God, and you're not living that life in front of people, they have no testimony. They have no way of knowing that God is real. If you said you received Christ, if you said, you said, come into my heart, and the Holy Spirit did, but you're not living up to that, how many of our witnesses are realizing that God is real through your life if you're not living that life? If you have not taken up your cross, and I'm not following him, and I'm doing what I want to do because, hey, I, I, I got my peace of heaven, you know, I don't care about anybody else. How is that witness leading others to Christ? So our lights are important. Our life are important. How we live in front of our families. If that sounds inviting to them, if God sounds inviting, if your love sounds inviting, if your love is patient, kind, gentleness, meekness, they'll believe that God is like that too. So your testimony is important. And Icon family found that out. What their dad did caused the whole family to be stoned, and the cattle, and his donkeys, everything fell apart because of what one person did in the Israelites, caused the Israelites to fail, your home fell apart, the community falls apart because somebody decided to disobey God. Is he telling you what sin does? Is this story telling you what sin does to you, what it does to your mind, what it does to your body, what it does to your family, what it does to people around you, what it does to the community? You see why Jesus had to come and die for your sins? It was, it was passing from generation to generation. No one lived. Once Adam and Eve died, everybody died. That's the community. That's the truth. Once that sin passed on to Adam and Eve, Boom, we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Death came upon all of us. That's what he's trying to tell you in this message, in this story, that because of one man's sin, Adam and Eve, sin entered the world and we all died. Jesus, amen, 
who died for our sins, took our sins upon him, washed us in his blood, we all live. It's as simple as that. You receive Christ, you have life. You reject Christ, you end up like Achan and his family burned. Okay? There, I read it. I didn't make this up. These are not my notes. If you receive Jesus, you have life. Your family has life because you testify to them. You live the life in front of them. Your community has life. The brother, father, cousin, sister, nephew who hears about you getting saved, but like, she got saved? Wow. Maybe there's something in God for me. Maybe I need to come to the Lord. Yeah. It starts to spread. The good news spreads. Love spreads. As much as darkness spreads, when you go off, they go off, she goes off, she says, I don't have to listen to you. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't want none of that in my mind. I'm going to find another religion that I feel satisfied with because of your testimony. You're not living the love in front of them. So this is what we read today. Verse 25, Joshua said, why have you brought this trouble on us? And I could say, when you who are believers step out of the grace and the power and the love of God, stop doing something differently in the world, you're bringing trouble on your family. You're bringing trouble to believers who say, what are you doing? And they call, you call yourself a Christian? That's the first thing people say. They call us hypocrites. They call us everything. But don't give them reason to, beloved. Don't give people reason to dog us out. They're going to dog us out anyway because of our beliefs. But if your behavior is helping them pick those names and call you that, well, then what can you say? Beloved, Akon did this. What could he say? What could his family say? Akon, you brought this on all of us. Mm, mm, mm. Beloved, verse 26. Over Akon, they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Achor ever since. And that says, translates the Valley of Trouble. Here we go. Jesus died for our sins. He came into our life. He healed us. He brought us back. We were once enemies of God, but now we are friends. He established our relationship, reestablished our relationship with God. We are called redeemed. Yes, we are because of the blood of the lamb. Are you redeemed? Live that life in front of people. Are you redeemed from your lifestyle, from the ways that you used to do? Are you redeemed? Are you saved? That's what he's saying. And then you become a, a, a rock to people. You become an established person that has it all together. You become a person that says, yeah, I serve the Lord, and this is how I live this out. And people go like, well, I want to serve the Lord too. How do I do that? And they come and they ask you how to do that. Beloved, you have to be lights. We have to be examples. We have to be salt. He says we are the salt of the earth. Yes, beloved. I hope this is helping you how this is lived out. Let's go to the New Testament. That was Akon. Here's the premise. That was the premise of our study. Here is how we live this out daily. Revelations 20, verse 11. Revelations 20. He says, And then I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. That's what I'm talking about. Judgment. It's going to come. And the books were opened before God's throne, including the book of life. This is where we're going. Akon met judgment instantly. Those of us who are born again, washing the blood, we want our name written in the book of life. This is what it says. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. What they had done, the sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Remember, didn't say what they said, didn't say their property, didn't say how much gold and silver they had, didn't say what their status in life was, didn't say how much, you know, how many cars they owned, how many homes they took, how many trips they took, they were judged by. No, nope, it didn't say that. It says, according to their deeds, their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Fire here, New Testament. Fire in the Old Testament. What's up with fire, God? <laughs> What's up with fire, God? Scripture says God is a consuming fire. Beloved, 
Achan met with, not only being stoned, they burned them. The sacrifices that was not supposed to be touched, those, once um, they took the battle of Jericho and they won, they were supposed to burn them. They were supposed to burn them. And they did. Here it says, anyone whose name was not found in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Fire. There it is. There it is right there. So fire in the Old Testament, you would say, oh, Sister Lumpkins, that was the time God's not going to do that. He had to do that to show a point. No, this is revelations. This is what happens. This is the truth. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, let's do what this means to me, how this is lived out. Here we go. Verse Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. And we start, 17. He says, don't misunderstand why I have told you I did not come to abolish the law. This is Jesus talking or the writings of the prophets. No, I have come to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until his purpose is achieved. What is God's law? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. He said that ain't changing one thing. He says, so if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. Beloved, teach one another to love one another. Teach people to love God. Teach people to turn from their ways and come to God. Teach people, show them by your life that there is a God, he is real, he's invisible, but he lives in you. Your spirit, your, your conversation, your attitude, your mindset, your determination, your love, your compassion, your engaging with people tells them that there is a God and he's real. And you're walking in that word. That's the commandment. Those are the little commandments he wants you to do. First one, Jesus says, I leave you one last commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He tells you, he tells you how we are to live this out. Let's do another one. This is Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. And he says, Jesus called the little children and put the children among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. He made this stipulant. This is not the disciples talking. This is Jesus. He says, unless you turn away from your sins and become his children. Children, innocent, kind, sweet, engaging, um, listening, um, enjoying life, having a, not, not talking down people, not saying this person is better unless they feel like everybody's the same. When you get kids in the playground, they, every, they treat everybody the same. Yes, they do. He says, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven series. This is what we're talking about. How do you get in? Humble. How do you get in? Become as a little child. Become quiet, engaging, soft, you know, not all this hard and indifferent. Don't be a bully in the in the playground. No. Children when they play together, they are the most their laughter, their caring, their kind when they are just being able to be just children. Yes, they are. He says, You will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as these little children, greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And then he goes on and says and anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. Welcoming. Welcoming the children to come to know Christ. So you can got grandkids, you got cousins, brothers, sisters, nephew, neighbors, kids. Anyone can come to the Lord Jesus. Welcoming them by your love, by your kindness, being good to them, showing them that God is real. Verse 6, he says, But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. So he tells you, don't make these kids do something wrong they shouldn't do. 
Don't make these kids, you know, like go and get into trouble and, and you benefiting. No, he tells you, don't do that. Don't turn these little kids' heart, their innocent heart, from doing the right thing and then you teach them how to do the wrong thing. No, he says, don't lead children astray. Lead them to obey the living God. That's our job, to teach children to love and to learn, to love the Lord thy God. Another one, 1 Timothy 1.17. 1 Timothy 1.17, I'm closing with this one. This is a trustworthy saying, he says. Everyone should accept it. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's you and that's me. And I am the worst of them, Paul says. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. You know somebody who doesn't think they can come to Christ? Do you know somebody who said, but you don't know what I did? That works. You don't know how long I've been in prison. That works. But you don't know who I hated for years and years and years. And then I didn't even care what happened to them. That kind of relationship. He says, I want to hear. Those are candidates for Christ. Those are candidates. No matter how bad they are on the rung in your mind, those are candidates for the blood of Jesus Christ. He says, then others will realize that they too can come and know the Lord Jesus Christ and receive eternal life and give glory and honor to God. Beloved, you share the gospel with whomever, whoever, wherever. You let them know that God is real by your life, by your example, by your patience and by your kindness, that God loves them and he's inviting them into the kingdom. Beloved, come on back. We're going to talk about how we live this out, being called as children of God, knowing that there is a judgment ahead of us. I welcome you back. Thank you for joining me.